So this is to give you the special maneuvers for the knee. Um, if you have someone who has uh, uh, no complaints and you're just doing a general exam, you'll do the inspection, palpation, and general range of motion of the knee exam. However, if you have someone who has a specific knee complaint, you want to add these additional tests looking for instability in the knee. So we've already shown the general inspection, palpation, and range of motion in a separate video. So we're going to start with the testing for the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments. So I'm going to have you bend your knee to approximately 90 degrees and plant your foot on the table. I now need to stabilize this foot, so I'm going to use a little bit of my own body weight to stabilize that foot. So now, with my hands on the knee, I'm going to try and translate the knee forward, testing the anterior cruciate ligament. I'll try and pull and see if I can translate it forward. And now I'll do the same thing, pushing backwards to test the posterior cruciate ligament. All right, and he has no instability. So now we're going to use the Lachman test. The Lachman is another test for the anterior cruciate ligament. I'm going to bend his knee to approximately 30 degrees. I'm going to stabilize the femur and attempt to pull the tibia forward on the femur. And again, he has no instability in the knee, so there's no anterior translation. Now we need to do varus and valgus stress of the knee to test the medial collateral and lateral collateral ligaments. Now, this needs to be done at approximately 30 degrees, and the leg can be kind of heavy and sometimes hard to hold on your own. So you can use the table to support it for you. So I'm going to move your leg off to the side so it's hanging off the table a little bit and have the knee bent at 90 degrees. If I want to test for valgus stress for the medial collateral ligament, what I'm going to do is place my hand on the outside of his thigh and the inside of his lower leg and push. Try and push the lower leg outward. For varus stress for the lateral collateral ligament, we'll do the opposite. Put my hand on the outer side of his lower leg and the medial side of his thigh and try and push it inward. And again, he has no instability, so there's no movement or pain. Finally, we need to assess the medial and lateral meniscus. This is a somewhat complicated maneuver, and what we're attempting to do is close the medial or lateral compartment of the joint in order to put pressure on the medial or lateral meniscus. So in order to test for the medial meniscus, we're going to do the medial meniscus McMurray's test. So for this test, we want to bend the leg, and again, you're going to let me do all the movements of your leg. We're going to bend his knee fully. I'm going to place my fingers on the joint line of the leg. I'm testing the medial ligament, excuse me, medial meniscus, I'm going to put pressure on the medial joint line. I'm then going to grab onto his foot so that my thumb is on the same side as what I'm testing. So my thumb is now on the medial side of the knee. I want to turn his tibia outwards, which turns his heel inwards a little bit. And with varus stress on his knee, I'm going to sweep his leg outward. So I am straightening and sweeping his leg medially. Bending it. And that puts pressure on that medial meniscus. A positive test would be pain or clicking at that medial side. If I'm testing the lateral meniscus, I'm going to move my lower hand so that my thumb is on the outside of the heel. I am now going to put pressure on the lateral side of his knee at the level at the joint line at the level of the lateral meniscus. I'm going to turn his tibia inward or his heel outward and then with valgus stress on the knee, again I'm going to sweep the leg out, only this time sweep the leg outward laterally. So sweep the leg out and straighten it and then back out and then back. And again, a positive test there we pain or clicking in the lateral side of the knee. So finally, we want to be able to assess for an effusion of the knee. If you suspect a large effusion, you can do a patellar ballotment. So for that, you want to sort of milk downwards from the quadriceps to bring any of the fluid down and then press on the patella and you'll feel the patella floating on the fluid wave. He does not have an effusion, so he does not have that. If you suspect a small effusion, you want to milk superiorly from the medial side of the knee to bring any fluid upwards, and then push laterally, and you might see a small fluid wave pushing out onto the medial surface of the knee. Again, he doesn't have an effusion, so we do not see a positive test there. This video is to demonstrate the advanced shoulder exam. In a general shoulder exam in an asymptomatic patient, you're going to do a general inspection and palpation of the bony landmarks, followed by a general range of motion of the shoulder. However, if someone is coming in with a specific shoulder complaint, we need to do some more specialized testing and isolate out the rotator cuff muscles. So again, we'll do the same inspection and palpation that we did in the general exam. Then we're going to isolate the range of motion and the motor strength of each individual rotator cuff muscle. This is going to be followed by assessment for impingement of the shoulder, 
the assessment of the biceps tendon, and then finally assessment of the AC joint. So again, when I'm doing inspection, I'm gonna to wanna to get a full view of the shoulder, so I'm gonna ask you to remove your gown. Thank you. So again, general inspection is gonna involve looking for any obvious deformities, any redness or swelling um, of the shoulder, and again, looking for evidence of asymmetry. So then we're gonna palpate our bony landmarks. We're gonna start with the clavicle where it joins the sternum. We're gonna palpate out along until we reach the AC joint, palpate at the AC joint, and then again, palpate along the superior aspect of the scapula. Look for any specific tenderness. And we're gonna do that again bilaterally. Now we're gonna move on to the individual testing of the rotator cuff muscles. We're gonna start with the supraspinatus muscle. So to isolate this, what I'm gonna ask you to do is do some movements, but then I'm gonna move behind you so I can see this being done from behind. So what I want you to do is hold your arms out to your side at a comfortable position with your thumbs facing out, and then I'm gonna have you move them up over your head. But let me move behind you. We're gonna do this evaluation bilaterally. So I'm gonna ask you to, with the arms in that position, raise your hands up over your head, and then bring them back down. And this allows me to do this while seeing what's happening with his shoulders. So now I'm gonna move back around in front of you, and we're gonna do some strength testing of the supraspinatus. So I want you to put your hand in that same position, sort of out to your side comfortably, which is the, what we call for to as the scapular plane. Now I want you to do is turn your hands down and I want you to hold them up against resistance, so don't let me push them down. And now we've isolated the abduction strength of the supraspinatus. So now what I'm gonna do is isolate the infraspinatus muscle. So I'm gonna ask you to hold your elbows at your side with your arms bent at 90 degrees. And again, keep your elbows sort of pressed up against your side, and now rotate your arms outward as far as they'll go for external rotation. Now bring them back in. Now what we wanna do is isolate the strength in that muscle. So put your arms in the same position and now press outward against me. Again, keeping your elbows at your side. All right, so now we've isolated the strength of the infraspinatus. So now we're gonna do the next testing um, partially unilateral and partially bilaterally. So for both the subscapularis and the teres minor, we generally just try and isolate the shoulder that's having pain. So we wanna do start with, with subscapularis, we need to do the strength testing in two different planes. So the first one is gonna be called the belly press test. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is put your hand up against your, your belly like this with your elbow out to your side. Now I'm gonna try and pull your arm away and I want you to hold it, all right? All right, so that's testing muscle strength of the subscapularis in the belly press test. So now I'm gonna move around behind you. And I want you to take that same hand and I'll bring it behind your back and I want you to move it up as far as you can up behind your back and scratch as far as you can, all right? Now this one we want to compare side to side. I want to ask you to do the same thing with the other arm. All right, thank you. Now let's go back to the arm that's bothering you. So bring that one back, press your hand up against your back. Now I'm going to put my hand against your arm and I want you to lift it off and press against me against resistance. This is called the lift off test. Again, for completing strength testing of the subscapularis. All right, so finally what we're going to do is the teres minor. So again, this is using the arm that's bothering you. I want you to bring your arm again, sort of out to your side at a comfortable position, about at 90 degrees. Now bend your elbow also for me. Now point your thumb out and backwards, and sort of like try and turn backwards as far as you can. So this is isolating Terry's minors. This is called the hitchhiker's test. So now we're gonna do that with strength, okay? So what I'm gonna do is sort of holding your arm in that same position, I want you to press against this hand, so against resistance. So do the same motion, but against resistance for the hornblower's test, so push against me. All right. So now what we want to do is test for impingement. So I'm going to move your arm for you. So just let me do all of the movements. So I'm going to take the arm and turn it with the arm out at 90 degrees, turn your arm inwards, and push as far as it will go. A positive impingement test for Hawkins impingement test would be pain at that furthest extension. All right. So now we want to test the biceps tendon. So again, we're going to have your arm out slightly forward with your elbow slightly bent and your hand facing up. And I want you to press upwards against my hand. Don't let me push your hand down. So push. All right. Positive test here would be weakness in the biceps or pain at the biceps tendon. So finally, to complete the shoulder exam, we want to assess your AC joint. So I'm going to ask you to take this hand and move it across your body and try and pat yourself on the back, completing the exam. And again, a positive test in that location will be pain at the AC joint. 